Hi guys, good morning. Okay, so most of you are writing your exams in May, right? Which is a high probability exams will get postponed. That also you have factored in, right? Some of you would have done that. Because of uh, center elections, generally the exams get uh, postponed in the month of May. This is the trend in the last 10 years or so, which I have noticed. Most of you know me, uh, but for those of you who don't know me, uh, I have been teaching SFM for almost 12 years now. So you can trust me with the subject. Again, you want me to stop? Huh? Start kar diya. It's okay. Leave it now. Okay, so I've been teaching this subject for 12 years now. I'm a qualified chartered accountant. I've done my CS also and I was uh, doing my international CFA also. I started my career in Bangalore. That is why I'm very closely connected to this place. When I first qualified, I came down to Bangalore for working in PwC, Al Sur. So I spent around one and a half years there after which I got completely sure that I want to get into teaching. And then the journey started. I have almost taught in all the institutes in uh, Bangalore. I have been to different colleges also. Uh, I started with CAPS Academy, Banshankri, uh, Sampath Academy, Rajajinagar. I have been to Ramaya Institute, New Bell Road for uh, management students. I was teaching them accounts, finance, taxation. I have done it all. I went to Christ College also from where I ran in a day because they gave me BCom students. Then I have taught MCom students in St. Joseph College. I think there are very few uh, faculties in India at present who would have done a live class with 1400 students. I have done that. And I did it in 2014 in Mumbai. Mumbai is where you have to tell students that I am the teacher. You are a student. That market I have done 1400 students in one batch. So I have taught lots of students I have taught during all these years. Yeah, post COVID uh, things got a little haywired. Uh, students were more into recorded lectures. Uh, I think, uh, to be honest with you, I think the maximum sensitivity we have seen is in Bangalore market. But if I am going, I am, I've started going to Kerala for last one year. We are getting very good numbers over there for live classes. I am hopeful that in Bangalore also, after this batch of mine, maybe you will spread a word that it is worth taking live classes. Your video classes is an alternative. You stay somewhere far in Karnataka on the borders. You can't come for classes. That inconvenience is there. That is fine. But if you are available for taking live classes, they are always handy. Number one. Number two, you have to start believing it again that faculties can help you pass the exam. You have to start believing that. You can do it by yourself also. In fact, to be very honest with you, I have done all my studies by myself. But I could understand that if there is a help from somebody, things become a little more easy for you. That is uh, the whole idea of taking classes. Lot of things are available on uh, YouTube. Lot of things are available on different social media platforms. Uh, if you go back 20, 30 years, lack of information was a problem. Today, abundance of information is a problem. We have come in an era where we go to a doctor and we tell the doctor, are you giving me this particular medicine? And doctor will ask you, what is your source? Google. So Google is like that, right? But you should stay away from Google. Otherwise, once you become little more matured, you will understand Google has an answer to everything. You put a sentence positively, it will support you. You put a question negatively, it will support you. And one thing which is for sure in Google is, you just ask them to diagnose your disease, they will say you have cancer. For anything. I am not getting good night's sleep. Okay, you may have cancer. So Google is that kind of a thing. So you have to understand the advantage. Use technology to your advantage. I always say that. But don't allow technology to control your brains. This is what I say. 
I am doing equity advisory for last seven eight years on paid basis. And three days back, I met a friend of mine, and this guy tells me, uh, "Now you know there is algorithm trading, where algo trades are done uh, at a given price. They calculate something called as support." and they buy at a given price they find some resistance they sell and somebody asked me this question very innocently that how do you plan to compete them i said there are so many humans to compete why should i talk about competing with robots you don't come and ask people right so lot of people lot of things are being talked about ai 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 are ultimately ai can only be used by humans no ai cannot do the work on itself and if you seriously feel that you can be replaced by ai then to you have not studied properly no we have to be confident about ourselves anything and everything that you study i don't practice direct taxation today i qualified in 2011 but it is not possible that you cross my path and you say something about direct taxation and i just nod my head and you make a fool out of me it's not possible that is how i studied direct taxation i scored second highest marks in dt in all across india when i appeared for my exams i don't practice for last 12 years i have not touched direct taxation but if you come across me and you say something the automatically my brain functions will tell me no no this person is speaking something crap i won't buy that as a chartered accountant this is expected from you be it accounting be it costing be it fm be it direct taxation be it indirect taxation you should at least have a working knowledge of all the subjects institute says expert knowledge i say working knowledge is required expertise can only be achieved in any one subject so i am teaching sfm for 12 years i started understanding economy very well i started understanding uh, uh, global economies very well the macroeconomic factors the microeconomic factors what you study as systematic risk and systematic risk i started relating things so only i started equity advisory my services are complementing each other you have lot of interest in accounting but so you work for a company as accounting person and then you do gst practice on the sidelines you will make a mess of both you have to be master in any one okay so uh, i uh, will be taking classes with you for 12 days this is what i earlier i was in a two mindset that maybe 12 or 14 days but now after going through your curriculum properly after doing all my analysis i have made a plan for you the plan is 12 days of classes will be done you don't even think for a single second that this is a crash batch i have lot of years of experience so i know how exactly i have to teach you all of you at the end of the classes will have enough knowledge about the subject will have enough knowledge about the uh, markets equity markets i don't waste even a single minute in my class not even a single minute i will talk only those things which are relevant for you at some point of time i 100% i am sure you will feel why is he talking all this it is not required like talking about modi ji or talking about rahul gandhi for that matter you may feel why is he discussing rahul gandhi it is important for you so i will decide what i have to uh, cover in my content you rest assured by end of 12 days you will become smart in this subject i assure you on this the least people do after taking my classes is they open a dmat account that's the least people do and they start understanding they start reading newspapers they start understanding economy they start reading e economic times and they start understanding what is this fii inflow fdi money this that crude prices going up currency going down nifty at all time high they start understanding all these things after taking classes some people ask me questions like will you only teach concepts in the class no i will do everything i'll do sums i assure you 60% of the sums you will only solve in the class i will make you capable you will solve the sums in the class now i'll just uh, i'll just give you a small uh, understanding of uh, how we are planning to 
approach the subject is the projector not on every morning we will start sharp at 10 o'clock okay I'll give you your first break around 12 o'clock looking at your facial expressions. You can't tolerate me mo for more than that much time. I know how much you can tolerate me, so I want to be in your good books. Around 12 o'clock, I'll give you a break of 15 minutes. Don't uh, misuse the breaks. 15 minutes does, should not become 25 minutes. Every break you try to squeeze 10 minutes extra, we waste a lot of time. It's all for you, nothing for me. Next 12 days is dedicated for you people. You try to take the most of it. Understood what I'm saying? I'll give you 10-15 minutes of break. I will be in the class itself. If you want to go out, have a cup of tea, coffee, whatever you want, you have it. I will be there in the class. If you have anything to discuss with me, please come and talk to me. I am highly approachable. In my material, my contact number is given. This is the number I'm using from the time I first came to Bangalore. This is a Bangalore number. You find my number in the material? On second page, I think it is there. I generally don't lie. <laughs> found it? You found it, right? 966348-7212. You found that number, right? That's the same number on which my wife or my dad calls me up. And that's the same number I've given to you people. There is no second phone assistant and all. I don't believe in assistants. I do all my things by myself. You have my number with you. The only thing you are not supposed to do is call me any point of time. So you try to use WhatsApp. You understood what I'm saying? Suddenly random calls is something I don't like because most of the calls are scam calls. I never take unknown number calls. You understood? Any doubt, my subject, any other subject, your personal life, your career, anything and everything you are free from today onwards till I am alive, you can ask me. Anytime. And people who have studied from me, they know I stand to my commitments. I may be little late in replying because over the years, people are adding up in my content uh, database. I may be a little late, but I am always available. During the classes also, if you have any conceptual doubt or anything you want to discuss, please come. I will be sitting here. Only during lunch break, I don't want you to come to me because that time I also need a break. I need to follow up with my people on certain things. So I'll be sitting in that room. If it is very urgent, then also you come and talk to me. After classes also, you have doubts, you get in touch with me. What subject classes, where should I take? I will give you unbiased opinion on, based on what my students have given me as a feedback. Okay. Uh, okay. Now coming to my subject, how am I planning things? First of all, guys, let's be very clear on this. This is your new subject. AFM is equal to SFM plus capital budgeting. Now what institute did last time when syllabus was revised, they removed capital budgeting and leasing. This is 2018 something. Now they reintroduced the subject as AFM and they made capital budgeting again a part of it. You understood what I'm saying? Now, because we haven't seen even a single paper, so we don't know what will be the standard of questions. But back in 2018, the questions which I used to do are of a very high and advanced level. So you're getting my point, what I'm saying? So those particular, that particular content only we will do. The same content. For that, you will be given the video classes. Now, capital budgeting, if you're doing, a lot of concepts of capital budgeting are also there in leasing. Institute has not clearly specified that leasing is also a part of your curriculum. But I would suggest, because this is the first exam, we might be taken by a surprise. So we will do leasing also. Some 10, 12 questions are there. You please do it. Okay. Which means, how do we start our discussion. We start with 4x. Okay. Then we will move on to, you don't open your books right now. You just listen to what I'm saying. We start with 4x. Then we will move on to derivatives. 
on an average, these two chapters should account for at least 40 marks. I am telling you, based on what has happened in last 12 years plus 5 years analysis, I would have also done when I was studying. So total I am telling you 15-16 years, this is how it is. 40 marks. Abhi, if in your exam, this does not come for 40 marks and it comes for 25 marks, you are not supposed to drop me a message that you were betting so high on. I am not betting on anything. This is not equity or commodity that I am betting. I am not betting. I am telling you the general trend and institute can change the trend at any point of time. But I am telling you on an average 40 marks, 45 marks will come from these two chapters. And these two chapters are very, very, very vast. Lot of things are there to study in these two chapters. So we will start with something which is the most difficult thing in your curriculum. Forex and derivatives. By the time we do these chapters, we will least I feel we need is seven days time for doing these two chapters itself. Least. If you are slow at perceiving things, I might end up doing eight days. I don't know. But I have to give you a coverage because if it comes for 50 odd marks, half the paper is forex and derivatives. So at least you don't have this wild thing in your mind that I will not study these two chapters or I will leave any one of them. That is a very wild and nonsensical thought. Please immediately remove that thought from your mind. It is difficult. I am making it very clear. But the idea is that we should, we should get good control and command on these two chapters. That is the idea. Once you do these two chapters, by that time itself, you will become matured. Today is 15th, right? 22nd or 23rd morning when I meet you people, you will already be a little more matured as far as finance is concerned. Your way of looking at things will change by that time itself. Then what we will do, we will move into chapter like equity. Then we will study m and a. Then we will study portfolio management. Okay, this is another chapter which can carry around 15 marks on an average. It can be 15 to 20 marks on an average. These two chapters generally are 8 to 10 marks each. Okay. And then we will study mutual funds. By the end of 12 days, if I am able to complete these portions with you, then I am happy. Apart from that, we have some small chapters like uh, money market instruments, bonds, and then capital budgeting and some theory topics. These things, we will put it in a mail and give you the link of those classes. That is the idea. But this is your main coverage where without idea is key, at least this much you should do face to face with me. That is the whole idea. Okay. So apart from that, whatever portions are there, you will get classes for that. Uh, there is one more uh, material. I have given you two books right now. They are loaded with lots of sums. You don't have to do everything. So if I tell you to do something, you do only that much. Please don't come back to me asking, sir, 42 numbers sum you have not told to do. If I have not told to do, you are not supposed to do. Matter close. Matter close. If I have not told you to do something, you will not do. I sat... I looked into the RTPs, suggested answers, uh, uh, institute new material, uh, then model test papers, mock papers. I've seen it all. Apart from all this, I found 21 questions, which I feel are a little different from what is there in my book. Those 21 questions, I have put it in a PDF. That file I will share with you. So you are covered from all angles now. What I can do best in the class, I will do. Where you need to have solid foundation. Capital budgeting, picked up from your IPCC. Okay, I don't assume any knowledge. Some part of capital budgeting will be done in Forex also. Plus properly capital budgeting, leasing, bond, money market instrument, theory topics. I'll give you the video classes. Apart from that, some more questions are added on. That also I will share the PDF that you have to do. Understood? Apart from that, only one thing is left, that is MCQ. MCQ questions I haven't prepared till now. By maybe mid of February, I'll get free because from here I'm going to Kerala then after a short break of three, four days. But once I'm back, I will share it with all of you, the MCQ questions. But you don't need it immediately. First, you please focus on the concepts. If your concepts are clear, then you will be able to handle the MCQ part also. Are we clear on this?
I'll tell you uh, how students have performed in this paper on an average. For a good student, seventy-five plus is possible in SFM. If you have done everything that I told you in the class, uh, every day before you leave from the class, I'll give you some questions to do. When you go back home next twelve days, I request you to dedicate it only for uh, FM. And you please do those questions after going back home. You understood what I'm saying? So you will do those questions, class discussions, class sums. If I say do a sum in the class, don't discuss among yourselves. Then my purpose is getting defeated. Exam, you are not allowed to discuss. So here also you don't discuss. You do what I am telling you to do in the class. After every day class, I'll tell you the sums which you are supposed to do. You do those many sums. Minimum two rounds of revision before your exam. If you do. you can very well score 75 plus some papers are easy this is a, i'm talking about a standard paper some papers are easy where our students have scored 80 plus easy 90 94 95 these are the kind of scores people have got in this paper it is your uh, backbone of group 1 you have to believe me on this it is what are the other subjects you have in group 1 financial reporting right and uh, auditing i don't have to tell you about auditing you know how scary that paper is scoring is difficult in that paper i am talking about the average i am not scaring you you don't go back home and tell kp sir said auditing you can't score so better we don't study i am not saying that but auditing requires a lot of commitment scoring in auditing anybody get 60 plus in auditing means the person is very good with auditing you won't hear the high scores like 80 most of the people generally who fail in auditing they score 32 34 why because they start writing their own audit experiences what you need to understand is what you are doing in real life is completely contradictory to what you are supposed to do to be very honest with you most of the cases we are doing things to protect the client <laughs> i can't say more than that okay uh financial reporting being your first paper becomes a little difficult for students mentally the subject is good it is it is scoring a lot of my students get exemptions in fr also but because it's a first paper then the questions kind of questions you get in consolidation amalgamation they are a little more challenging so some people find it difficult so what i'm trying to say not because it is my paper but because this is how the trend has shown to be if you do good in this subject you will end up scoring good in group 1 this has to be your savior so what if we get a very difficult paper very difficult paper of sfm comes once in every 4 to 5 years when i thank god that good that i am not writing this paper in that paper also you believe me on this i have seen my decent students in the class who are very attentive listening to everything listening to everything very carefully following all my instructions doing multiple rounds of revision they still end up getting 55 plus you people believe me what i am saying right you don't think right i am just telling you stories i don't have stories to tell when i tell you stories i'll tell you that i am sharing stories with you okay this is all the reality i am sharing with you okay so i have given you the brief up now about everything you have anything in your mind you can ask me you want to ask me something nothing right ha ah. mm, not much your maximum portions are getting covered in the class you may have to devote three to four days more you just assume kp sir is teaching you three four days extra the idea is after taking my classes you should not come back to me and tell me ah you did not do this portion see honestly speaking if you ask me you have to uh, sanjana ac is not on please check here uh you uh, i don't want you to come back to me and tell me that sir uh, this was not done and that was not done i have always believed this for last 12 years i try to give you the maximum coverage in the class itself if you speak to my past students no who have qualified and become proper chartered accountants no even if you ask them also they will say kp sir material itself is enough so that is the idea okay but if some of you take the uh, added responsibility of doing something extra it is good for you you should do it by yourself also that this is the portion kp sir has done i still find four four or five questions which kp sir could have done okay you do it 
you understood what i am saying so but i am trying to give you the best possible coverage in the class itself my classes plus my videos plus whatever pdf documents i share with you on a later date that will be enough we'll form a group i think there is a group already formed we'll take all of you in that group i'll share and remaining videos whatever i share with you na that videos you will get just like that i'll not encrypt and dig all those things i won't do you take it just i trust you because i have taken care of the cream portion so it does not matter even if you share with people you do it <laughs> i generally i'm very honest because of the fact that i'm punjabi so we are very uh, cut and dry on everything no phones in the class okay rupali especially you yeah sir this share is this much profit you have that tendency please don't do that hello you also don't do that so you know some of them have already become my clients so i have i know their tendency right i know what they do like today you will be thinking geo results are coming i am holding so many shares i think you have some 836 shares of geo right i am not supposed to share portfolios but this is again i am just i'm just showing you that how much i know my people that's the idea the number was correct <laughs> okay what do i expect in return from you after saying all this i expect only one thing from you in return don't tell me how to teach humble opinion a uh, humble request to all of you please don't tell me how to teach you see you think about it like this not that see uh, my subject is like you are studying fr okay you are studying fr you go to the teacher and you tell the teacher uh why did you do it like this why this treatment was done like this why a journal entry was passed like this teacher will try to explain you argue what will teacher say hey it's written in uh, accounting standards just follow that is the level of frustration auditing you challenge a faculty faculty will say standards on auditing says so we do this correct no guys you understand what i'm saying dt idt provisions provisions proviso all these things uh then you are left with law again same thing section section has given this bare act has given this you have to follow what else can be done only my subject i can't say anything what do i say hardly there are some theories which we study in this subject mostly it is logical deduction of everything so in the class you can challenge me 100% that sir i don't i am not convinced with what you said i would love that if you say that but you should have a ground for saying that just to sound different from the crowd sir <laughs> i beg to differ don't do that but if you should come up because at the moment you say i beg to differ then i will ask you for your suggestion but i have to convince you on everything that i am telling you because i don't have any standards provisions proviso sections bare act standards i don't have anything so i have to convince you on everything if you are not convinced come back to me okay it's on right okay uh, i was telling you the schedule of the classes so 10 to 12 generally today uh, we have been a little late in starting so today we might have a little bit of uh, uh schedule difference but for the remaining 11 days what we will do guys 10 to 12 we will study don't be late for the class after going back home you have to give minimum uh two hours of time for revision of the concepts and practice the sums which i am doing so that your preparations are done within next 12 15 days properly uh after 12 uh 12 15 12 20 we will restart then uh, we will again study for around one and a half to two hours then i'll give you a break that break will be of around 45 to 50 minutes that you take a lunch break proper wala then again we meet around 3 o'clock uh, then again i'll teach till 5 450 something like that i'll give you a small break of 10 minutes okay and then we will call off the class at 6 it may be 6:15 it will not stretch beyond 6:30 on any given day okay because uh, i want you to go back home and revise everything that i am doing so i don't i don't want to speed up the process okay the whole idea of doing face to face plus video is that i should keep a control on my speed so i i am tension free from today i know whatever portion i cannot do i can give them video backup that is the whole idea okay 
acha let me ask you few questions now today for the first time nifty has done you know nifty what is nifty you people know what is nifty nifty uh, i have started teaching now okay so you have to be very serious now nifty is an index there are two index which we generally look at to understand the overall market right now you understand one thing market is a representative of the economy how good is your economy if somebody asks you how good is your economy you try to capture that through your equity markets why equity markets there is so much buzz there is so much attraction towards equity markets what is the reason because we try to understand economic performance through equity markets abhi equity market is a very big term because there are more than 3000 listed stocks on equity market so if if you come and ask me sir um, uh, how is equity markets doing in india right now you don't expect me to sit and give you knowledge about all 3000 shares right so how do i capture that performance of the equity market for that we have something called as index and in india the two most common index which we use are sensex and nifty okay there are exchange in india bombay stock exchange and national stock exchange bombay stock exchange has an index which is called as sensex national stock exchange has an index which is called as nifty nifty 50 that's how we call it nifty 50 which means nifty comprises of 50 top companies top companies does not only mean market capitalization not the biggest companies the companies which are having very good corporate governance their dividend policies are very stable compliances are on point blue chip stocks blue chip means large cap stocks mainly nifty comprises of 50 stocks how those 50 stocks are performing that will decide whether nifty will go up or come down and similarly sensex is made up of 30 stocks sir are there stocks common in sensex and nifty definitely yes sir who decides what stocks should become a part of this index bsc and nsc will decide are these stocks changing yes from time to time they have the right to throw out a stock include some other stock they have a right are you people understanding what i am saying okay so when you ask me how is indian economy doing a layman will say i think mark economy is doing very good okay how do you know that because nifty is making record high every day this is a layman language layman means are in our world layman if you go outside and talk to auto driver how is indian economy doing he will start telling you something else all bad everything is bad this that government is not good not talking about that i am talking about at our level if somebody tells you that how is economy doing uh, i think probably economy is doing good how do you know that because uh, markets are registering new high every day acha which market are you talking about actually there is nothing called market there is a representative of the market and that representative of the market is basically index like nifty and sensex when nifty comprises of 50 stocks sensex is comprising of 30 stocks so if these 30 stocks are doing good compared to their previous close overall up and down overall but if it is doing good then market will be in green today if part of these stocks are doing bad some are doing good but overall they are doing bad then markets will close in red today you people understood what i said You, you don't try to do analysis of all three thousand, four thousand stocks. You only look at the index and try to get a picture out of it. Now my question is: Nifty today has done twenty-two thousand, which is its all-time high, all-time high. See how lucky we people are that we are experiencing this day in our life on first day of your SFM classes. Huh? 
अरे दैट विल बी देयर यार स्पेशली वेन आई सॉ दी कंटेंट नो इट इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू से ए एफ एम यू एज्यूम ए एफ एम यू हियर इट एज ए एफ एम somebody tell me what do you think is the main reason suddenly why so much of spike in the markets come on come on be participative okay we have to talk in the class a lot ha huh? what about elections ha huh? possibility <laughs> surety <laughs> he's saying possibility possibility is that you will score exemption in sfm AFM. <laughs> That is possibility and probability. What is sure? You don't feel excited about it. Correct? No. But that's a valid point. But how much do you want to celebrate? Okay, what happens if Modi government comes in? What? <laughs> We don't have to pay taxes from that point. We might end up paying more taxes. You never know. Stable government. Okay, that if that's how you want to think about it. Stable government. Okay, but do we know now that government Modi government is going to come in again? Do you have any doubts about it? So, how long do you want to celebrate that? My point is Diwali. You celebrate, right? We all celebrate Diwali, right? Lakshmi Puja, Ganesh Puja, we do it, right? You distribute sweets on that day. Next day again you give sweets. Third day again you give sweets. Fourth day again you give sweets. So asking why are you giving sweets? अरे Diwali था ना यार चार दिन पहले. अरे हो गया Diwali. Think about it. अरे but था ना Diwali. Same thing, no. how long can markets celebrate that probably is that the only reason why markets are going up every day may not be uh, we don't know we are just talking everybody same thing are modi government will win the elections no sir that's why markets are what will happen medical cost will become free or uh, gst rates will be cut down what is going to happen why suddenly so much happiness for that we ever felt that modi government can be replaced by uh, uh intellectual rahul gandhi any other reason it was always clear yaar <laughs> adani case was always clear you didn't know that now they have uh... are you say anything yaar i told you finance has no boundary speak anything yaar Huh? How does that make a difference? Economy will grow. You are saying, okay. So there is a Satguru inside you. <laughs> Quarterly financial results are on the way. He said Adani uh, got a clearance. Uh, that's good for Mr. Adani, right? He became the richest in India again. Mukesh Am uh, Ambani has a problem with that. So suddenly, Reliance and Jio shares also started performing now. If you know, you know. I will not speak everything very clearly. Okay, I have to be because what will be used against me, I don't know. And you can't speak against Radhani and Ambani. They are super people, yar. <laughs> They are the pillars of this country. After Modi ji and Amit Shah, what happened to it? and you must spending is very high but that leads to inflation right which is bad for your money power okay you think only inside india consumption can help india grow to 7 trillion economy by 2030 you have to depend a lot on exports right we are just having general discussion idea is not to say that till now beautiful all of you whatever points you have said it's absolutely good okay but somewhere i have to make you think in the different direction also china did not become china because of its own consumption china was the highest population country right you believe that right so it's not that khud hi consume karte raho and country ka gdp badhate raho it does not work like that you depend a lot on exports so maybe our exports will get good maybe china is struggling right now because of which we get opportunity you understand what i'm saying if china is not able to match up the demand maybe we have an opportunity over there maybe our foreign alliances are very good you only see the bad side of it modi ji is traveling a lot is going to italy a lot you may feel like that 
<laughs> Some of you are thinking, why are people laughing? Well, that's when you need to read newspapers. <laughs> Melody. <laughs> correct, correct. No, uh, if you ask me, uh, I personally feel the foreign alliances, I am still waiting for one more point, which you, none of you have said, and that is a very, very, very important point. I am still waiting for that. Uh, I feel the foreign alliances which India have developed in last few years has helped us a lot to become a powerful economy. Now people listen to us. That is one very important thing. G20, uh, if you, but that is still not my point. But G20, correct, you are saying it correct. The foreign alliances can be seen, the reflection can be seen in G20 where we are almost addressing it. So we as a nation have become very strong now. That is for sure. Yes, this government coming in will give us the stability which we are looking for. And government has to execute its plan using somebody's shoulders. And the two most reliable shoulders right now are Reliance and Ambani. Uh, sorry, Adani. Which, which some of us have a problem with, but we should not have a problem. Because you should only have a problem if you did not get a project because Mr. Ambani or Adani got it. Otherwise, if you see Tata's, Billa's, uh, Jindal's, nobody is complaining. Why a common man is only complaining with Adani and Ambani getting more and more projects? This I am not able to understand. We are not going into politics right now. But this I am not able to understand when people say, why would he give everything to Adani? Maybe because he is capable of uh, uh, executing those projects. You will get, you will get uh, uh, what do I say? Bonkers, just looking at the number of zeros in the debt which these people have. If you just look at their debts, no, it's like 2,30,000 crores of rupees of debt. One example I'm giving you. So your calculator will show error. It will not be able to feed that number. So they have a lot of responsibilities on their head. But there is one more reason which, you see, you understand one thing, Indian markets strongly are dependent on how uh, US markets do. And right now, US markets are in a celebrating mode, even though Christmas is over. And when US markets do really good, Indian markets mimic. We have still not got into a zone where Indian markets will do good irrespective of global markets. I promise you that they will also come. When we are going up, 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 irrespective of what is happening to global markets. But right now, we are not into that phase. So my question to you now is, why are US markets celebrating? They, don't tell me they are celebrating Narendra Modi winning election. You say that, I'll throw a mic at you. I've kept one spare mic for throwing at you. Why are US markets celebrating? I am saying, let's keep it simple. Indian markets are showing overreaction on the upside. Maybe because of US markets, because US markets are in a celebrating mode. Now, my question to you is, why are US markets celebrating? Very good. This is what I was willing to listen to. Interest rate hikes were done for last one and a half years because you know inflation was a big problem for uh, US and European nations. Now they are saying inflation looks to be in control. Again, this is a point of discussion on some other day because if I keep speaking, I will keep speaking. We never start the subject. This is a topic of discussion on some other day. But right now they are saying we feel inflation is looking in control. What does happen next? Rate cuts will happen. Rate cuts will happen. What will happen? Liquidity will flow into the economy. If liquidity will come only, then we can do what he was saying. Consumer spending will go up. Real estate consumption will go up. If real estate goes up, what next happens? Cement demand will go up. Trying to link the economy. You understand? What? The demand for metal will go up. Overall economy will go into the boom. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, liquidity will come into the economy. You will be able to buy your two-wheelers and four-wheelers more easily. Think about it. Tire demand will go up. So companies like CA and MRF will enjoy. You need more money to do transactions, taking more finance. Banking business will go up. NBFC business will go up. This is how economy is connected. So one thing goes good, it has a multiplying effect. Everything goes good after that. Your point is also correct. The mandir construction which is happening right now, hotel stocks are boosting right now. <laughs> uh, 
Maldives is also there. Correct. I knew Maldives will happen. So two months back, I went to Andaman. I am fortunate. <laughs> you understood what I am saying? One last thing. What else is one big reason why market shifted its gears on the upside? One last thing you are missing. You said everything beautifully. I am very happy with this class because I got answers from all corners of the class. I am very happy. Seriously, I am saying this. I did not get this level of participation. I am very happy. One, one very important word you are missing. Uh, one and a half, two months back, market started shifting gears on the downside and everybody got scared. Rupali, you remember? I posted on InvestorWise page. Market was 18,800. I posted. Enough is enough. Now markets will show a rally. I'm not boasting myself. I have all the proof on social media. At least the good ones I don't delete. Or the bad ones I never post. <laughs> no, but this time what happened? Market drastically fell by 7, 800 points. And when everybody started panicking, then I sent, I, I sent the post that now markets will, are, uh, market is ready for upside rally. You start investing now. From 18,800, now today we are sitting on 22,000. All this happened within two months. I, I'll show you that particular post. I had something in my mind on that particular day. That one point, if you can tell me. There's one thing which pulled the market down very badly. More oh, beautiful. Correct. Suddenly, crude prices went up. Suddenly. The moment crude prices go up, no, you start fearing like you have seen a ghost. And if everybody takes a back seat. Everybody takes a back seat. The most important commodity on earth is not gold, my friend. It is crude. And you are heavily dependent on crude imports. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there are few countries which have control on crude supplies and if they don't get the price which they want then this cut down on the supplies saudi iran russia i won't say russia has been very very kind to india see uh, you know this person zelensky ukraine clown is cl clown from ukraine right why did he fight Russia? Why did he fight Russia? Tell me. See how many things I have taught you in the last 15-20 minutes. Just see. If after this you still have time in your life and you want to practice in finance going forward, you see my vlogs which I have posted on YouTube. You just see how much you can learn about this economy and when you speak in people, people will respect you for the knowledge which you have. I promise you on this. Just listen to my vlogs. It's already available. It's for free. Why did Yelensky decide to fight Putin? Because the European Union promised him that if there is a fight, we will protect you. <laughs> they never did. Because the European Union thought that if we come as a backup, Putin will back out. What they don't know is Putin is a bullheaded person. So Putin said, we will go all guns blazing, bring down Ukraine. Then Zelensky comes and says, Narendra Modi is a good friend of Putin. Why is he not interfering in this matter? Then Modi government diplomatically made a statement that if matters can be solved peacefully, they should be done. But if it requires a war, then it's okay. Why did Modi not speak? Because Modi wanted crude. You have to be diplomatic yeah, when you're doing politics. You can't be more. Oh, you don't do that. You understand what I'm saying? You have to play. So the moment this happened, uh, United Nations have put a sanction on crude oil of Russia. You see what United Nations will do if you are indisciplined, no, they will put san sanction on you. You remember school days, the naughtiest kid of the class, go and sit there, nobody will talk to you. That's how it works in real life also. India was waiting for that opportunity. The moment sanctions were put on Russia, they had abundance of crude with them. Now India comes into the picture. India says, nobody is buying crude from you. I am in dire need of crude. You give me crude. Russia said, wow, welcome. 
But then Modi said, no, but see, nobody is taking crude from you right now, but I am taking. So you got to give me crude at lower price, number one. Number two, I will not pay in dollars. So they started taking money in rupees, INR. I don't know if you are able to understand what I am saying, but there is a lot of gravity in this talk. I will I'll complete this. After some time, Russian government had so much of INR that then they, sh uh, then they have shown some objection to this softly. Uh, no, we can't accept more INR. Then Indian government said, you take any currency from me. You take Chinese Yuan from me. Because Chinese economy is on a downside. So Yuan is very cheap right now. So India said, I will pay you in Yuan, but I will not pay in US dollars. Because my country forex reserves are in dollars. Hello, you people are with me? I am not the only excited person in the class, right? You are understanding what I am saying. India said we will pay in yuan, but I will not pay you in dollars. You, you, uh, Putin said I don't have any choice because nobody else is taking it. You take as much as you want. So US, US put an allegation on India in their journal called Mint that India buys crude from Russia and then it supplies to other nations. But that was false. The foreign minister Jay Shankar said it's a false allegation on us. Does not matter. Who are the two countries who were supporting Putin? Very good. So we are able to connect the dots. Okay. Now see, India is supporting Russia because of crude. Why is China supporting? Uh -huh. For them, it does not matter. US? Uh, something more diplomatic is involved in this. Huh? And this is my biggest fear. Uh, uh, people who follow my uh, vlogs or small videos which I put, I am telling continuously, be little alert with markets. Markets are going high every day. You need to have liquidity in your hand. Don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. Don't put everything in the market right now. Because markets are all time high. Question is why China is not objecting to Russia. I'll give you my understanding. I may be wrong. China is waiting for Russia to finish its uh, war with Ukraine. Then China will target Taiwan. And when China does it to Taiwan, US will have an objection. So he needs a powerful nation on his side. India will not be there. So he needs Putin by his side. And then he can go back to Putin and say, when you were going after Ukraine, I never said anything. Now you want your full support in this. And two days back, they made a statement that capturing Taiwan is inevitable. Matlab, it has to happen. This is global economy for you. Now the question is, sir, why crude oil is so important to us? I'll give you one simple understanding. Normally, you pay for crude oil in dollars. Normally. Now, whatever we have done, that is our supremacy and diplomacy. But normally, we pay for crude oils in dollars. A country, how strong is its economy, is known by the forex reserves which they have. Uh, let's take an approximate number. Right now, our forex reserves are close to $625 billion. 1991, we did not have any forex reserves. Uh, a big role was played by Manmohan Singh at that point of time, who we feel now is on a permanent mon. You understand Mohan Bharat, right? You don't speak anything. That's a Hindi term. But he, at that point of time, decided that we have to invite a lot of FTI, FII money into the country. Then only we can have forex reserves. So basically, thing is very simple. Only when people bring their money into your country, you can save dollars. So right now, after doing all this struggle for so many years, we are able to accumulate how much? $625 billion. What is my first question to you? Why crude oil is such a vital element in any country's economic progress and equity markets? We can only buy crude through dollars, but that is not important. What is important, I am telling you now. My one month average crude oil imports is $45 forty-five 
billion dollars one month 10 months 450 12 months around 550 15 months over the reserves which you have accumulated over last 35 years within 15 months you can lose all that money are baba it is not cinema in pvr that people can restrict you from going it is not gold which you can stop buying it is crude it is a necessity good so you understand how important this commodity is and you import 45 billion dollars of crude every month i am not saying all this on my own it's given in the newspapers or you read anywhere this is the situation of india right now that is why we are heavily dependent on crude prices if crude prices shoot up for any reason a war happens why equity markets go down tell me when a war happens why do equity markets go down so why is equity market reacting to everything ultra sensitive why see very simple maths if if there is a war between two nations some kind of sanctions will happen some uncertainty will happen crude supplies will go down crude supplies will go down crude prices will go up crude prices will go up your total price 45 billion dollars will become 50 billion then you need to make payment in dollar then dollar will also go up against rupee your forex reserves are going down if crude prices are going up then what else is happening the cost of raw, raw materials is going up finished goods prices are going up demand will go down consumer cons uh, consumer index will go down inflation will come into the economy so many things happen at the same time the first to react is equity market prices start dropping because in uncertainty nobody wants to stay in the equity markets right now the two biggest certainty in the indian equity market which is pulling the markets up every day number one modi government will win the election what we don't see inside the inside story what we don't see is that there is a budget also interim budget they won't do anything my friends they will make it look very nice when the government comes in then you have to see what is the final budget they present they just have to say one line long term capital gain tax rates have been revised from are zero se 10 to kiya na it was zero they made it 10% i mean they will just say one thing long term capital gain tax have been revised to 15% short term capital gain tax have been revised to 20% you see markets falling like a pack of cards will this happen sir i don't know what ma'am will do we don't know madam is supreme we don't know anything you understood so uncertainty is there but we are only right now looking at positivity we are only looking at positivity we all like to look at positivity if you come to kp sir sir how many months i need to study to pass group 1 pakka se 3 months 8 hours daily then you go and search on youtube what is the minimum time needed to clear ca group 1 and somebody comes as a hero with 2 million views i have 200 views because i said 3 months 8 hours daily somebody has 2 million views because he said how to crack ca final group 1 in 10 days <laughs> that is the reality of our country now not only our country everybody i hope guys this was useful for you i have created a base now now whatever we talk we'll develop on this base okay i have lot of things to discuss so slowly and steadily i'm giving you some knowledge okay everything i can't do at one go okay so this is the reason why see i'll put it in a gist crude oil prices go up dollar will also go up because you demand more dollar against rupee you demand more dollar against rupee you need to buy more dollars why because you need to pay for crude if dollar demand goes up rupee as a currency will depreciate one currency appreciation is another currency depreciation that is what forex chapter is all about you are exchanging currency against currency are you go to the market to buy a mobile phone what are you getting commodity what are you paying currency but currency market what happens you give one currency you take another currency rupee goes down 
then what happens to your forex reserves goes down what happens to raw material cost goes up what happens to finished goods cost goes up they they will chase take from you only no what happens to demand goes down if demand remains constant then you are heading for inflation again if inflation comes into the economy it will also add more pressure to your currency because inflation eats away the purchasing power of money are you people understanding what i'm saying so this is overall crude prices going up is overall bad sir where are we standing today right now your brent crude price is around 77 78 dollars per barrel russia ukraine war when happened it went up to 125 130 you understood what i said and when it went to 125 130 do you know what was nifty at that point of time 15500 after covid this was for the first time we have seen such a steep fall in nifty from 18200 it dropped down to 15500 only for one big reason war uncertainty crude price going up bad for overall economy okay now i have given you the base of our discussion now forex is for an exchange in your curriculum it is a chapter called as international finance acha after going back home you will open the study modules of the institute even if i tell you not to some of you will do that then you will start searching for forex 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 then you will come tomorrow and ask me sir are you teaching for ca final or cma final okay this is ca final only guys we are here for ca final afm classes writing exams in may 2024 and onwards i have named the chapters as per my way of doing it okay the same chapter in your book will be called as international finance okay institute material is a little i don't know if i can say that but little clumsy they have put jumbled up the concepts suddenly portfolio mein bonds will come suddenly derivatives mein equity will come i have segregated everything and i have made pure chapters out of it you people got my point what i am saying okay okay now see this currency market what happens in currency market one currency is quoted against another currency so let's say in currency market today rupee per dollar is at 82 rupee per dollar is at 82 how do you read this for 1 dollar how much rupee do i have to give for 1 dollar how much rupee i have to give so you answer that sir if we give 82 rupees we get 1 dollar needless to say you understand that dollar as a currency is stronger than rupee guys correct no now see this rupee per water bottle you go to the shop to buy a water bottle and you ask the shopkeeper how much is the price of this 1 liter bottle and he tells you 20 rupees what are you buying water bottle that's a commodity you buy the commodity and you pay a price in currency that is normal commodity market currency market you give one currency to get another currency you people understood what i'm saying because this is the currency for which price is given this is the currency or this is the commodity so we call it as base commodity what is the base what is the basis of paying a price this is my base in this case my base commodity is water bottle in this case my base currency is dollar so first you have to get comfortable with this term the currency for which price is given is known as base currency the currency for which price is given is known as base currency and how do you ask the shopkeeper what is the price of this water bottle so this is the price and we refer to it as price currency and the same thing applies here this is 
प्राइस करेंसी गाइस आर यू विद मी द करेंसी फॉर विच प्राइस इज गिवन इज बेस करेंसी द करेंसी इन विच प्राइस इज एक्सप्रेस दैट इज प्राइस करेंसी In any quotation, you have two currencies. One currency for which price is given. One currency in which price is expressed. Price is given base currency. Price is expressed. Price currency. I'll tell you something. It is very good that some of you are taking writing notes, running notes. It shows that you are proactive, but you don't have to do it. In your material, everything is pre-printed. Everything is pre-printed. I will read the notes with you. so that you don't sleep in my class i have done something i have given some spaces intentionally so over there i will make you write and everything that i say guys everything that i say it's already there in your book i'll re i'll read it and anything that is important for you to note down and not given in the book i will make you write it as a note so sit tension free that i should not miss this important concept acha equity market analysis stock analysis some fundamental analysis macroeconomic issues those things are not given in the book that is only for your knowledge but what is required academically from exam point of view everything is given in the book we will read it together so when i am speaking you please focus on listening to me you understood rest everything is given in the book now guys see this 3 months back rupee per dollar was 78 spot spot means today rupee per dollar 82 how would you perceive this how do you read this dollar as a currency has appreciated against rupee dollar as a currency has appreciated against rupee that is why you need more rupee for every dollar i can also say if dollar has appreciated it also means rupee has depreciated do you people agree with me on this if dollar has appreciated it means rupee has depreciated against dollar do we agree on this okay spot it i have written again another spot it i am writing rupee per euro is 92 rupee per euro is 92 which is the base currency euro is the base currency why because very simple answer sir it is price of euro expressed in terms of rupee so euro becomes the base currency and what is rupee price currency okay very nice look at the two spot trades can you uh, deduce some message from this only look at these two rates what is the message which you are getting very good euro is stronger than dollar do you people agree on this using a common currency which is rupee if you ask me to derive a relation between dollar and euro then i will say euro is stronger than dollar hello you people agree with me on this why is euro stronger because we need more rupee for euro compared to dollars if you agree on that logically one of them is correct one is incorrect if you agree with the last thing what you said if you believe that then one of them are is correct and one of them is incorrect hello first one is correct sure everybody anybody with the second option first one is correct yes first one is correct how do you know that sir right now i just said that euro is stronger than dollar now in the first quotation euro is the price currency dollar is the base currency for one base currency for one base currency what is this uh, guys what is this standing for per per means one correct no 
फॉर वन डॉलर यूरो नीडेड शुड बी लेस देन वन नो बिकॉज वी नो यूरो इज स्ट्रॉगर हंड्रेड परसेंट अग्री सो दिस इज टेक्निकली इनकरेक्ट ओके नेक्स्ट कोटेशन रूपी पर पाउंड हंड्रेड कैन आई से दिस इज दिस रिलेशन लुकिंग गुड टू यू स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट पाउंड देन यूरो देन डॉलर एंड देन रूपी सर आर देर करेंसीज विच मेक अस फील रिच यस जपान मेक्स अस फील रिच जैपनीज येन इज वीकर कंपेयर टू रूपी नो देर मेनी करेंसीज बट जैपनीज येन इज वन सच पॉपुलर करेंसी विच इज वीक कंपेयर टू रूपी ओके let's not get into all this i know you can come up with a technical question japan is an advanced nation why their currency is so weak or us is not doing so good why their currency is at 82 per per dollar dollar per rupee 82 why we'll talk about all that later okay so pound is the strongest then comes euro then comes dollar and then comes rupee going by that tell me which one of them is correct first one is correct okay very nice first one is correct okay wherever i am trying to buy the weak currency i should pay less than one wherever i am trying to buy a strong currency i should pay more than one okay and in this currency pound becomes my base currency euro becomes my price currency are we clear till this part okay i'll ask you certain situations you try to answer them rupee per dollar on friday okay last friday i think it was 12th on friday rupee per dollar was 80 okay i am giving you three three hypothetical situations you try to answer so this chapter you are focusing on understanding the currency relations appreciation depreciation at the same time how this appreciation and depreciation will impact different people if somebody tells you no why did you study forex today in the class so you should have an answer to that no you can't say because it comes for 20 marks <laughs> that's a stupid answer you can give why we study forex what are you expected to achieve after doing this chapter what you are expected to achieve i am telling you once you become a chartered accountant you go and join a company this company is involved in imports and exports business they are importing some raw material or they are selling their finished goods outside of india so you need to understand how much dollar exposure they have what is the possible risk involved how do you tackle that risk are there any strategies to ensure how can i do speculation on this currency exposure all these things you study in this chapter hedging speculation these are the two most important terms hedging is used for insurance if i ask you why are you studying sfm from me the first answer is i have my ca final exams i am exposed to the risk of not passing so i have come to take classes this is hedging for you you all are hedgers right now you have not come to this class that ah oh, you know what i had a bet with my friend he said kp sir teaches very good i said kp sir does not teach very good so i am betting on kp sir's performance in the class that is speculation you understood what i'm saying so when you have come to protect your exposure that strategy is called hedging and when you just speculate on something positive negative profit loss upside downside that is called speculation you understood so in real life in the currency market how hedging has to be deployed or how speculation has to be deployed is what you study in this chapter so before you deploy those strategies you should know under what circumstances currencies will impact me adversely and under what circumstances currencies will impact me favorably was that you have to understand okay so this is the entire chapter for you 
sir we are doing forex because we may come across a situation where my company my my client or my own organization has an exposure to currency and i have to guide how to hedge or how to speculate that currency exposure this is the least you can speak okay now friday rupee per dollar was 80 let's talk about me i am a faculty i travel across india for teaching i go to different institutions either i directly collect fees from the students or the institute pays me i travel across the india on a daily basis 15th jan which is today morning time i got the economic times newspaper and rupee per dollar today is 82 my question to you is very simple when i look at this news that rupee against dollar has become 82 will i be happy or sad see i'll tell you one thing guys if i ask a question and you think you can answer it in 2 seconds i suggest you stop for a while because i don't ask questions where answers can be given in 2 seconds if you still want to give an answer you say the opposite of what you want to speak probabilities will be higher for you to be correct <laughs> you understood <laughs> means the moment you are saying sad no you think oh i am replying in 2 seconds happy 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 i'm re asking you the question i am in bangalore i saw the newspaper what currency was friday ko uh, 80 today it is 82 am i happy or sad please take your time think about it depends if i want to buy or sell but i have already told you my situation i am a faculty simple faculty who travels across india for teaching either i collect the fees from my students or the institute collects it on my behalf and they pay me your situation is clear don't give me diplomatic answers like politicians situation is clear who are you talking about kp sir he read the newspaper at 82 will he be happy or sad again same thing what currency i am what did you pay me i so say that <laughs> there might be third option always indifferent i am indifferent are baba we are not talking patriotically i will be sad because my currency is diminishing <laughs> hello <laughs> jai hind i am feeling sad right now no we are talking about my situation so she is correct no you paid me fees in rupee no or you called me up hey kp sir can i pay in dollars <laughs> you didn't do that right you paid in inr what did i say very clearly i told you i travel across india students directly pay me or they pay to the institute and i collect from the institute hello usually my situation is clear so what is the first requirement of forex chapter there should be a cross border transaction if there is no cross border transaction your forex knowledge is of no use at least you people understood okay same situation we'll modify a little bit suppose you became a chartered accountant and then you are working in us you are working in the accounting team of a good university let's make you and me both happy okay so you are working in this university and uh, uh in that university suddenly there is a requirement of a finance faculty so by chance you thought of a poor fellow it thought our kp said teachers okay okay you spoke to the management over there that i know a faculty from india he is decent he can come and take the classes if i speak to him they said okay you please go ahead with it so you called me up hey kp sir good news for you i am your student i am working in this university in us earning in dollars you are still earning in rupee right sir ha <laughs> i earn okay sir no worries sir i am giving you one opportunity you come to us for taking assignment of 7 days i said okay yaar i'll come because this is a new experience you said sir okay for 7 days how much will you charge you let me know we'll do that for you i said okay i would need uh, rupees 5 lakhs for 7 days of assignment so you said okay sir don't worry we'll book your air tickets we'll uh, transfer this amount to you then you can come and take the classes 
Okay? Understood? You have heard the story very carefully, right? Okay. Now I go take the classes. Everything happens. I got my amount initially itself because I don't want to take a risk. No, after seven days in US, you give me the tickets and say, go back to your country. Go, go. We are just joking with you. No money. During these seven days, 80 became 82. What about KP, sir? Happy, sad, indifferent. Think and answer. I said, don't answer in two seconds. Huh? Indifferent. Why? Because I am receiving the amount in INR. Only a cross-border transaction is not enough. With a cross-border transaction, there should be foreign currency invoicing. I am receiving payment here in rupee. We are trying to understand the situation in which I will be exposed to currency fluctuation risk. Are 80 becomes 82, 80 becomes 78. It is a fluctuation risk only, no? It is a risk only, no? If I don't have a cross-border transaction, no currency fluctuation risk. If I have a cross-border transaction, but I have home currency invoicing, no currency fluctuation risk. Same situation, third, third, uh, circumstances I am giving you. You told me to come and teach. I said, see, I will come and teach. This is a big assignment, 15 days. I told you, uh, will you be able to pay in rupee? You said, no, sir, we will pay in dollars. Okay. And so 15 days, we will consider it as different dates of transactions. Every day, we will settle on the same day. So there is no risk of default, sir. It's not like we will ask you to take 15 days classes and then pay you the amount. No, sir. One day you get, we'll immediately transfer. Second day you teach, we'll immediately transfer. So every day, whatever it is, $500 or whatever it is, you said, sir, we will pay every day. So I'm also tension free. I'll teach for a day. I'll get the money. Second day I'll teach. I'll get the money like that. Okay. So I taught for 15 days. During this time, there was a lot of volatility in the currency and 80 became 83 by end of 15 days. Now you say, happy, sad, indifferent. You be a little particular in what you are answering. I know why you are saying happy, but try to think about it. We are converting same day, correct? Huh? Because they are paying me same day. No, I won't go to the currency exchanger every day. No, they will directly deposit in my account and my account they will convert it no? on that day's rate. Now you say, I will be indifferent. I will be indifferent. Okay. I am not saying 80 becomes 83 or 78. All I am saying is 80 is very volatile. So forget about rate going up, rate going down. Rate is very volatile. But am I exposed to currency fluctuation risk? The answer is no. Why? The third situation. Date of transaction and date of settlement are same day. If you tell me to come and take classes today, but you will pay me after one month, then date of transaction was today. Date of settlement is after one month. Then I am exposed to currency risk. Hello, but if the settlements are happening on the same day of transaction, that means DOT and DOS are same, which means I am not exposed to currency risk. So basically you will have these three things in your sums, cross-border transaction, foreign currency invoicing and date of transaction and date of settlement are not same. When institute wants to ask you a question, they will satisfy these three conditions. Only then you can have a sum on Forex. Do you people understand what I am saying? Okay. Come to page 3 in your book now.
in the one uh, in the currency market we are reading this uh, the warm up part in the currency market one currency can be bought oblique sold against another currency the currency for which price is given is known as base currency and the currency in which price is expressed is known as price currency this is what we started our discussion with suppose rupee per dollar is 65 in this case we know it is price of dollar expressed in terms of rupee hence dollar is the base currency and rupee is the price currency now suppose in 3 months time rupee per dollar has become 67 which means the rate has gone up correct please write over there the space is given to you please write it means in 3 months it means in 3 months dollar has appreciated against rupee it means in 3 months dollar has appreciated against rupee that is we need more rupee for every 1 dollar that is we need more rupee for every 1 dollar okay now see next line similarly if rupee per pound is equal to 85 please write here pound is the base currency here pound is the base currency here pound is the base currency and rupee is the price currency pound is the base currency and rupee is the price currency for 1 pound for 1 pound we need rupees 85 for 1 pound we need rupees 85 okay you have to always read the word per as 1 okay after full stop on comparing on comparing above two quotations on comparing above two quotations we understand we understand pound is stronger than dollar we understand pound is stronger than dollar next point number 2 exposure to exchange rate fluctuation risk will arise only if the following three conditions are satisfied the ones which we were discussing now there is a cross border transaction invoicing is done in foreign currency and date of transaction and date of settlement are two different dates okay so almost all the questions which you get in exam they will satisfy these three conditions okay cross border transaction invoicing is done in foreign currency and date of transaction and date of settlement are two different dates the above three conditions if cumulatively satisfied cumulatively satisfied means uh all three conditions have to be satisfied that will result in transaction exposure okay before we read for the you see this i am an indian importer okay very simple very very simple okay i am an indian importer 
and i have uh, let's say i have purchased goods from us we basically import raw material from us and on importing this raw material we pre process the good once we make it a finished good we sell it in india itself so i import this raw material for dollar 5 lakh uh this is payable in 6 months time okay now how do you think about it there is a credit of 6 months there is a foreign currency uh, invoicing and there is a uh, cross border transaction all three conditions are satisfied which means indian entity is exposed okay now you think about it in 6 months if i ask you one simple question in 6 months what am i afraid of am i afraid of dollar going up or i am afraid of dollar going down it's a simple question i am afraid of dollar going up so how you think about it guys is very simple you apply your accounting knowledge you see you know payable is a liability for us and we don't want liabilities to go up correct no from accounting perspective if you think this is as simple as this payable is a liability we are afraid of liabilities going up so importer will be worried about foreign currency appreciating do you agree on this which means importer will also be worried about home currency depreciating same thing no hello if instead of importer this is a situation of exporter who has sold goods to us for dollar 5 lakh sold goods for dollar 5 lakh he will receive money in 6 months time now he has a receivable receivable in your books of accounts is an asset and we are worried about asset going down not up so if it is a receivable situation then we are worried about asset going down then we are worried about foreign currency depreciation that is home currency appreciation do you people agree with me okay so remember this total four category of people we will do the sums on whichever sum you pick up in forex there are only four category of people importer exporter foreign currency borrower foreign currency investor importer and exporter very simple next time if i ask you please answer it like this sir we are importer okay sir importer has a payable payable is a liability we are worried about liability going up so we are worried about foreign currency appreciation exporter okay exporter has a receivable receivable is an asset we are worried about asset going down so we are worried about foreign currency depreciation do you people agree with me on this okay let's talk about foreign currency borrower and let's again make you a ca right away okay uh hdfc bank located in india hsbc bank located in let's say us okay so you are working for hsbc us but you are doing offshore you are sitting here and getting them clients over there so once i went to the hdfc bank i need a working capital loan for a year i went to hdfc bank and they quoted me 8% as coming out of the bank i met you so you told me hi kp sir how are you this that blah 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 i am working for hsbc offshore unit now and i try to i am a relationship manager i try to uh, get uh, loan finance for people need uh, in need of money in india but the sanction happens right from us in dollars i said very good so you asked me that sir you are also in need of loan i said yes so you are now talking about business you told me sir what rate are they quoting to you i said they are quoting me 8% so you told me sir why would you pay so much i'll get it done for 4% in us <laughs> you understood the moment you say this what will happen i'll become happy because i am doing a straight comparison 8 minus 4 is 4 and what you are thinking in your mind is you got a business and second thing you realize is kp sir has forgotten forex both happened at the same time you told me sir done 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 i'll get it done sir no processing fee waiver of fees for you only special for you 4% net nets are done which means today i'll give you sir 1 lakh dollars after one year you pay me 1 lakh plus 4% 1 lakh 4000 dollars very simple hello you people understanding it's a simple story right how will you give me my money i need 80 lakhs today if i go to hdfc bank hdfc bank will give me 80 lakhs inr plus 8% 
return after a year do i have a cross border transaction no but what you did you involved me in a cross border transaction now this today you will give me 1 lakh dollar i'll go to the currency market give that dollar convert into rupee at the rate of 80 how much will i get 80 lakhs what am i supposed to pay you i am supposed to pay you 1 lakh 4000 after one year knock knock sir pay back the money where will i go currency market what do i need to do need to buy dollar 1 lakh 4000 what is the rate not same the rate has become let's say 88 let's say for sake of easy calculation 80 plus 10 percent is 88 what is my effective cost cost of funds and dollar appreciation cost of funds i am paying you and dollar appreciation i suffered in the currency market did i borrow money borrower has a liability you are worried about liability going up liability went up because of currency market so i ended up paying more say something three things i have discussed base currency price currency okay situations in which you will have a currency exposure cross border foreign currency dot dos different third thing i have discussing with you how many types of people are there in the market exporter importer foreign currency borrower last one i am left with is foreign currency investor listen to me very carefully i'll give you a classical example japan very interesting okay listen carefully this is what makes me bullish on indian market you understand what is bullish i am not saying foolish I'm saying bullish positive after taking sfm classes on the last day when i am leaving you all should tell me one thing sir we are bullish on sfm performance now you understood it means sir we are positive expecting upside optimistic for everything we can use the word bullish markets mein bullish means we are expecting more rally in the market bearish downside so that, that is what i fear if you come and tell me i am ultra bearish on my sfm performance after studying from you you can't tell me okay <laughs> okay so bullish and bearish two category of people bullish means optimistic bearish means pessimistic bullish means upside bearish means downside now you listen carefully uh if you go back 20 25 years there was one country which was having a supremacy because of its technological advancements because of its uh, uh, relation with other countries because of the kind of exports they were doing and that country is japan they had a time when the japan markets have done stupendously good their economy everything was stupendous then it shifted from japan to china then china became a supreme power their exports were hitting new highs every day their gdp was doing good their real estate was doing good that phase was for around 10 to 12 years 15 years now i anticipate a similar phase will come in indian equity markets that is why i tell people that don't look at a short term story abhi kya hoga next 3 months what will happen next 5 months what will happen no overall if you see if this time modi government comes in the kind of stability we will have and the again that 5 years cushion which they will get to frame new policies build upon their existing foreign alliances in, in uh, incorporate the strategies which they have in mind probably next 5 10 years will belong to india okay har cheez mein there is uncertainty the uncertainty is that he is growing old and we don't know who is the what is the backup plan for him Amit Shah likes to stay behind the door. He formulates the policies, but he does not want to become the face of the uh, pa pa party. And then you have Yogi, but Yogi has some other issues. He's too much into Hindutva and all those things, which is not healthy for a nation. If you understand what I mean, you understood what I'm saying. So that overly Hindutva is not good because everybody has to stay in this country only. so we don't know so uncertainties are there but yes this government is good now what happened listen carefully 
suddenly what happens we feel japan has lackluster growth in last 15 years okay china is somewhere now beaten down india is evolving as a supreme power now this one us investor was asked a question on uh, cnbc english that because japanese economy probably will now start making a u turn after a gap of 15 years so japan also becomes attractive for you as an investment avenue and second alternative is india where will you put your money both india and japan or only japan or only india now i am telling you what he replied he said i would still stick to indian economy because of stability in their currency if you don't know forex you will not understand what he said but he finished off the topic in one line and i was very happy because i understood not because i am an expert in my field but because i respect this subject a lot because this subject has taught me a lot so i have heard some very 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 renowned and uh, uh, to uh, presumably intelligent people who come and tell on youtube that afm or sfm whatever it is is a hollow subject it's not a great content that we have we need to upgrade our content to match up the levels of acca cpa so i heard lot of people saying all this if you come to me and ask me i would say the content of sfm is probably very good because whatever i have learned in my life i have learned it because of this subject so this statement can one of you please decode it for me we would still like to invest in indian e equity markets compared to japanese equity markets because we feel indian currency is more stable or we feel it will be more stable who are we talking about foreign currency investor my last category of people hmm how does that help you okay paying back or receiving back ha us investor okay that's correct a uh, stronger may not be needed stability is needed but too much volatility is not good on an average everybody gets around 55 to 65 in sfm makes sfm a, a good paper volatility is there in auditing 34 64 28 82 we don't like volatility in real life also are yaar today i am discussing so much with you tomorrow morning you come to the class and you see a different group of me i am shouting for no reasons disrespecting you would you take that behavior no you want one stable behavior right normal humans are expected to have stable behavior we expect stability in everything whatever brings in more volatility becomes more risky matter close you will remember from today onwards anything which is more volatile will be more risky and as human beings we don't enjoy risk if it does not come with the equal amount of rewards if i take higher risk i want higher return are your fd returns are volatile that's why you get 6% no equity returns are volatile that's why some people end up making 30% a year needless to say sometimes you make minus 20% also because it is volatile fd says sit aram se you will get 6% a year no more no less only your bank has to default for you not to get anything chances are very rare there is a us investor he is ultra bullish on infosys so he wants to put money in indian equity markets that is in the stock of infosys he thinks in a year he can easily make 20% return buy the stock at 1500 end of the year he will get 1800 he will sell what he did not think about was the currency risk involved rupee per dollar was 60 end of the year rupee per dollar becomes 72 
just assuming so that you understand the numbers just assuming 60 plus 20% 72 1500 plus 20% 1800 you are an investor you have a foreign currency receivable hello for them what is a foreign currency rupee receivable is an asset they want rupee to appreciate but what happened rupee depreciated after one year what happens to us investor sad correct no two markets equity market currency market plus 20% you see whatever i thought happened you will talk like this no i said no 20% return will come in a year but what he did not notice is it's a cross border transaction and he will be exposed to currency risk so currency market what happens minus 20% what is is effective return zero another reason why you want your country's currency to be stable are equity share prices regular uh, controlled by anybody equity share prices are equity share prices controlled by anybody what whatever plus minus happens every day every second are they controlled by somebody no it is dependent on demand and supply are commodity prices controlled by somebody no demand and supply are let's not go deep into all this sir cartel formation can be done to control prices no we are not talking all that competition commission act 2006 and all we are talking normal things are commodity prices controlled no are equity prices controlled no are currency prices controlled no who regulates the equity markets sebi who regulates the forex market rbi very good you know that rbi regulates the currency market rbi knows one thing if every day 80 becomes 76 82 85 62 65 it's not healthy so whenever there is more volatility in the currency market rbi will play very smart if there is sudden spike in crude prices you know what rbi will do they will tell you not to buy forex currency from the foreign exchange market they have 600 billion dollars of reserves no they start giving from their reserves so that demand in the international market for dollar is not going up so if the demand in currency market foreign forex market is not going up for rupee uh, dollar then rupee per dollar will stay stable hello you know what else they do we are importers of two things primarily which can be procrastinated gold coal so they intentionally impose import duties on both so for the time being you will stop importing these two so if you start stop importing demand for dollar will come down again rupee per dollar will stabilize so rbi timely they will do certain things on their part to keep the market stable because somebody who is bringing in fdi money into india or fii money into india they want stable currency market am i making sense okay lot of people if you ask them would you put money in adani stocks no why they are highly volatile highly volatile one day 200 up 200 down heart attack so you don't want to do that some people don't want to do that if you like flirting with danger then you go and buy adani stocks 200 300 up 300 down it's okay it happens that is the volatility you understood what i say some people like only slow moving counters like best example itc very slow itc has no relation with the markets it goes in its own pace <laughs> if you do markets you will understand what i'm saying okay we'll just finish this part then we will take a break let's come to point number 3 
an importer or foreign currency borrower has foreign currency payable and is therefore afraid of foreign currency appreciation or home currency depreciation okay uh, if you read the remarks below i have written it over here see think of payable as a liability that is foreign currency is a liability and we are afraid of liability going up understood and if you come back uh, to point number 4 exporter or foreign currency investor has foreign currency receivable and is therefore afraid of foreign currency depreciation or home currency appreciation think of receivable as an asset that is foreign currency is an asset and we are always afraid of asset going down okay point number 5 two most recognized currencies are dollar and pound in fact dollar is considered as a functional currency that is most countries prefer to use dollar as an invoice currency as it enjoys high liquidity so dollar as a currency has got a recognition where you know there are a lot of countries even today they are not comfortable doing a trade in rupee they are not comfortable so they are still very comfortable doing a trade in dollars or or euro or pound but they are not very comfortable in rupee so that that uh, level of reputation you have to earn as a currency for your currency to become so popular so right now maximum com countries are comfortable with dollar dollar euro and pound okay so that is why dollar is referred as a functional currency some countries uh, where they don't trust each other's currency like if india is trading with indonesia india is inr indonesia is indonesian rupiah maybe they don't want to transact in any of the country's currencies so they will go for a third common currency dollar now you understand one thing if there is a third common currency being used then both will have exposure to currency market one will have a payable afraid of going up one will have a receivable afraid of going down okay in any transaction either of the countries will be exposed to exchange rate risk how however in case of third currency invoicing both the countries can have exposure example trade between india indonesia indian company exports to indonesia and they are going to get 40000 okay so let's write indian entity indian entity has dollar receivable indian entity has dollar receivable it is therefore afraid of it is therefore afraid of dollar depreciating against rupee it is therefore afraid of dollar depreciating against rupee and indonesian entity and indonesian entity has dollar payable indonesian entity has dollar payable it is therefore afraid of it is therefore afraid of dollar appreciating against indonesian rupiah it is therefore afraid of dollar appreciating against indonesian rupiah r u p i y a h okay so third currency invoicing both the entities will have exposure come to the next page in our entire discussion of forex problems you will encounter one of the following situations like i told you there are maximum of four situations that you can have maximum sums guys will be on importer and exporter with few questions on currency borrower foreign currency borrower and on foreign currency investor okay situation 1 indian country company us company 
US company uh, has sold goods to Indian entity. So from Indian entity point of view, we have imported goods from US for dollar five lakh payable after six months. So what Indian entity will have to do? They will have to buy dollar after six months from the money exchanger and pay in dollar. This sequence you understand of the activities. Indian entity today bought goods. Then after six months, what they will do? They will go to the currency market, buy dollar at the prevailing rate, and make the payment. Okay. So two dotted lines are given to you. Please uh, write over there. Indian entity has dollar payable. Indian entity has dollar payable. Bracket you write liability. Bracket liability. Okay, we think of payable as a liability. Okay, payable bracket liability. So we are worried about. So we are worried about dollar appreciating against rupee. So we are worried about dollar appreciating against rupee in six months. We are worried about dollar appreciating against rupee in six months. Next situation two. Indian company sold goods to US company for dollar ten lakh receivable in three months. And after three months, Indian company will receive dollar ten lakh. What will they do once they get the dollars? They will go to the currency exchanger, and they will sell dollars to convert into rupee. It's a receivable. Receivable is an asset, so we are worried about asset going down. That is dollar going down. Okay. Any exporter does not want the foreign currency to depreciate. They are happy if foreign currency appreciates. Okay. Please write. Again, dotted lines are given to you. Indian entity. Has dollar receivable? Indian entity has dollar receivable. Bracket you write asset. It is therefore afraid of dollar. it is therefore afraid of dollar depreciating against rupee in 3 months time it is therefore afraid of dollar depreciating against rupee in 3 months time next situation 3 indian entity decides to avail a loan of dollar 1 lakh at the rate of 5% from us and then you see this they have given a bullet repayment structure what is a bullet repayment structure you pay the interest every year and then there is a one shot principal repayment at the end of the period okay so every year you will only pay the interest and then finally you will pay the principal now you think about it guys you have to pay interest every year which means every year you have to buy dollar for paying the interest component and then principal will be paid so there are multiple currency exposures okay so that is what we have written over here indian entity has multiple exposures to exchange rate fluctuation as every year it will have to buy dollar for interest payments would like dollar to depreciate would like dollar to depreciate because we have a payable payable is a liability so we want liability to come down so we want dollar to depreciate against rupee during every year okay so uh, just that hdfc and hsbc example which i gave you foreign currency borrowing my effective cost of funding is made up of two things cost of funds plus foreign currency appreciation or minus foreign currency depreciation you understood remember that example no 4% loan plus dollar appreciation by 20% so you ended up paying a very high price correct no okay and last situation is indian investor he is bullish i have already explained you the meaning of bullish you can write over there expecting upside underline the word bullish and write expecting 
upside from market's point of view bullish means you are expecting upside in the market bullish means expecting upside okay so he is bullish on s&p 500 index just like guys i explained to you there is a nifty index there is a sensex index similarly we have s&p 500 index in us okay so we have dow jones also we have nasdaq also i'll introduce these things later on to you but right now you know for for the index you know this much that nifty and sensex are the index in india they are used to showcase the overall performance of the market that part you have understood okay so this person is bullish on us markets so he wants to invest in us equity markets with a horizon of 1 year okay now what will happen in this 1 year in case of foreign currency investments effective return is made up of two components return on the asset what you are getting as a return on the asset plus foreign currency appreciation minus foreign currency depreciation guys have you understood what i said okay you you do one thing there are three lines given let's write one example over there i am changing the above situation okay i am making it the other way okay let's write indian investor only we'll write indian investor let's write indian investor bought shares of microsoft Indian investor bought shares of Microsoft and in a year made 15% return Indian investor bought shares of Microsoft and in a year made 15% return During this period dollar depreciated against rupee by 10% during this period dollar depreciated against rupee by 10% therefore net return is equal to net return is equal to 15 minus 10 Five percent net return is equal to fifteen minus ten. Five percent. You understood? Uh, return on the asset minus foreign currency depreciation. That is effectively what you will get. Okay, we'll take a break.